Hello, welcome to episode 109 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, 1978's Dawn of the Dead. When there's no more room left in hell, the dead will walk the earth. I love this film. Uh, it's just it's one of my favorite horror films for sure. And uh, we just talked about Night of the Living Dead in the previous episode. And I said in that uh, video, I wasn't sure how much of a success Night of the Living Dead really was. Uh, I looked it up and it really was a success because it was made for like $100,000 and it grossed millions. So in that sense, it's probably one of the most profitable horror films ever made. Um, but no nevertheless, 10 years later, in 1978, um, George Romero returned to this kind of uh, this zombie movie series and made Dawn of the Dead. Uh, a nice continuation from Night of the Living Dead. We move over to Dawn of the Dead. I like that kind of link, even though there's no characters from Night of the Living Dead in Dawn of the Dead. And we kind of pick things up, it feels like, concurrently with Night of the Living Dead. Uh, even though, you know, the film was made 10 years later, it's now in colour, so it feels very different to, to Night of the Living Dead. Um, but at the, the point that the film begins, Dawn of the Dead, it's in a television studio, people are panicking, you know, people want to leave and escape, and so it feels very much like this thing has just started, the outbreak has just started, uh, as opposed to them dealing with it for a long time. That's what I, I, I kind of glean from watching the film and, and looking at the story anyway. And we follow four characters, um, Stephen, uh, Peter, Roger, and Francine. Uh, Stephen, also known as Flyboy throughout the film, uh, because he owns a helicopter and he takes these three characters off with him uh, just to escape, you know, from, you know, the, the, the kind of hub of where all this stuff is going on, out into, you know, wherever, there's no real plan. Uh, we have Flyboy, his girlfriend Francine, uh, Peter, played by Ken Forey, and um, uh, Roger, I believe. Uh, and Roger and Peter are these two kind of SWAT team members who arrive at the beginning of the film to take on this kind of uh, uh, housing block that's been overrun with zombies and, and there's a very, very shocking sequence. Uh, it's interesting because the first time I watched this film, I watched it with my fiance and uh, after about five minutes she had to turn it off because she thought it was terrible. Uh, she hated the zombie effects because what they did with the zombies was they just kind of uh, put blue makeup on them. And so it was, it, it does look a little shoddy at times. I, I do think I've read that um, someone who worked on the film thought like it didn't really um, uh, pan out the way they'd hoped, I think. Uh, and yeah, it, I don't think it works quite well. But uh, I, I kind of went along with that and I, and I turned the film off and I never returned to it. A couple of years later, I thought, I need to check this out. People keep giving Dawn of the Dead this big praise. Let's see what the fuss is all about. So I watched it. Uh, and then I just, you know, within about 10 minutes, I was starting to get into the groove of it, and I loved it by the end. Watching it again the other day was, was fantastic. I just, I love this film so much. I love the setting of it, because these four characters, they take off at the beginning in a helicopter, and they arrive at a shopping mall, uh, and that's the setting of, of the film. And it's one of those things, it's like, it's, it, it's become, again, it's become part of the law almost, you know, this idea of being in a, uh, an abandoned shopping mall during a zombie outbreak has been used so many more times, and even in the remake of Dawn of the Dead, and in games like Dead Rising, it becomes a part of the, the lexicon of, of zombie uh, history, I think. Uh, and it's such a, a clever idea to set a kind of zombie story, I think. So you have these four characters, and they, they land on the roof, of this mall and they find this kind of uh, storeroom I guess a series of storerooms up, up, up high in the uh, the mall and down in the actual center itself with all the shops and stuff it's been overrun by zombies and so these four characters they they're stopping there to kind of find supplies but they start to think why don't we just stop here you know we've got everything we need downstairs like the shops I mean there's literally anything you could ever want it's all down there for the taking we just need to be careful work out a system to avoid the zombies and maybe clean them up and kind of sort out a system. And that's the whole film, is these four characters inside this mall trying to build a new life for themselves. And I, I love the progression of it from this empty storeroom that they first arrive into, this little mini apartment that they fashion for themselves that, that almost looks like a real apartment, but not quite. You can see kind of the, the kind of seams around the edges. It's not really, I mean, really, it's just boxes and you know, and, and things like that. It's not really a bed, it's just bedding and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I love the progression of it. I love the uh, the humour of the film that comes into play, you know, especially when they, they first get into the shops and they can take what they want and they're running around and having a good time and stuff and sliding down the escalator. Just lots of fun moments like that. I do, I do think that some of the humour is a bit off-kilter at times, like the you know, th th this is a bleak film, uh, ultimately, and by the time we get to the end of the film, not everyone survives. 
uh, but the credits run over this very kind of jaunty kind of tune and so it has this kind of dark humor to it and it's almost a bit too much at times um, but generally I, I think the film's fantastic and I, I really enjoy every second of it you know it's, it's quotable I love the characters you know we got this man we got this by the ass I, I just I, I love watching this film spending two hours with these characters and uh, and Francine is, is is pregnant and that plays into it so there's there's drama within the group as well and they're different kind of uh, uh, they're different kind of personalities and they're different uh, wants and needs you know about whether they should stay whether they should go um, and what they need to do to survive and what they need to do to kind of keep themselves protected uh, and whether or not their position in this mall will be threatened by other people coming along um, so yeah it's, it's another kind of masterful um, film that kind of uh, just focuses on a, a few people in a situation where they're trying to survive and uh, I think George Romero did a great job. The special effects in this film are incredible. I mean right from the beginning of the film you see a zombie's head get blown off and it's just like holy shit like it it kind of starts as it means to go on and especially towards the end in the big finale there's a big kind of fight sequence I guess you could say that again is kind of filled with a lot of humor at times but there are some r truly gruesome effects uh, that far outstrip anything that they did in the original film and so if you like gory practical effects uh, this is one of the films for you uh, now th about the rest of the series I haven't seen the the fourth fifth and sixth entry in the series but I have seen the third one Day of the Dead um, and I think that film has probably some of the best practical gore effects of all time uh, so the, the stakes keep getting up raised as far as the effects go um, but I also love that that the story of that one as well like I said in my Night of the Living Dead review, all three of that initial trilogy of dead films uh, have something different to bring to the table, even though they're similar situations, you know, people trying to survive um, and a kind of small group of people uh, focusing on them and, and their kind of personalities rubbing against each other, working together. Uh, I love the character played by Ken Forey in, in this film. Um, you're just a calm, cool, collected guy who's got it together. Uh, he, he's up for a laugh, uh, you know, at points, but he also, you know, he's kind of he takes charge, you know, and he, and he wants to like build a wall to make sure that even if anyone got inside the mall, they wouldn't be able to find their little kind of storeroom apartment that they've kind of fashioned for themselves. And I think there's something very appealing about the, this, the idea of this film. There's kind of a wish fulfillment going on, I think. And it just, it's an enduring um, idea, uh, living in a post-apocalyptic world and trying to survive. I think a lot of people, myself included, or maybe not, maybe it's just me, but I think a lot of people kind of secretly love the idea of a zombie outbreak, uh, love the idea of having to uh, fend for themselves and to find a place to survive and kind of killing zombies and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, even though it's life-threatening stuff and it would be terrible if it actually happened. Uh, that there's kind of this um, thrill of being alive maybe, I don't know. It's such an appealing genre, uh, this post-apocalyptic zombie genre that has become such a huge thing from video games to uh, TV shows to comics. The Walking Dead, one of the biggest things in the world right now. It's such a popular um, uh, place to, to set a story. And uh, I think Dawn of the Dead is one of my favorites just from that setting, the mall. You know, it's, it's a really cool idea and, uh, and it's pulled off really well. And I, I thought that they probably filmed it in an abandoned mall, which is pretty stupid on me because all the, the shops are, are stocked with, with stuff. But um, they filmed at a real mall and they would have to film, you know, during the night and then get everything cleaned up by 6 a.m. And then, you know, the, the, the actual shoppers would come in. And they kind of play off the idea in this film of... Um, you know, do these zombies actually have anything of their human life retained within their their brain, their psychology, their, you know, is it just all motor movement or is something of, of themselves still inside them? Uh, you know, one of the characters gets bitten and, and they say that, you know, I, I don't want to be one of those things walking around, you know. Um, you know, just, just, you know, sort me out if it happens kind of thing. Um, because they kind of hint at the idea that perhaps a lot of the zombies that are coming into the mall are doing so out of out of habit, you know, out of the life that they that they used to have and kind of this almost uh, muscle memory of just coming back to this mall, you know, that it was a part of their their daily lives, just coming into the mall, walking around. And I think there's one shot where you see a zombie on the payphone, which is kind of a, a kind of like just again a throwaway gag, I suppose. But it hints at that idea, and I find that quite interesting. And, and Romero definitely explores that further in Day of the Dead, in terms of is there anything uh, left of these zombies inside them from who they used to be. 
uh, and, and also kind of I guess casts a kind of a little bit of a social commentary against uh, you know just the shoppers in general, consumerism in general, being the Walking Dead themselves, and uh, I find that kind of, that idea kind of funny as well, and probably a little bit accurate. But I, I love this film, I, I really do, and uh, again, revisiting it is always a treat. Um, I probably will watch this again pretty soon, Day of the Dead, now I've watched Night and uh, Dawn, and I think that all three of them just make such a nice kind of uh, three-act story, you know, of, of just, again, focus on the on this group, on, on this group, and then on, on this group, and it's all kind of the same story, but it, it, there's a progression to each one of them, and uh, I would say that this one is probably a film you should see before you die as well, Day of the Dead. But there's only so many films you can include in the book. Uh, and is Dawn of the Dead a film I see before you die? Absolutely. Uh, I just think it's, it's, I think it's one of the, be the best horror films. Um, it's not very horrifying. It's not very scary. Uh, and, in, and in that case, I, I guess you could say it's not one of the best horror films. But uh, I just think that it, it takes this idea of the post-apocalyptic world and survival uh, and does it probably better than it's been done before, I think. Um, while I think Day of the Dead is better in some ways, I think that just the the setting, the actors, the performances, and uh, and the story of Dawn of the Dead is where it's done at its best, I think. Uh, for me, anyway. So, there we go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I will see you with tomorrow's review. Only a few more left now until we reach the end of Horror Month 2016. Uh, I'm getting really burnt out doing this, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it at the same time. And uh, it's always great to talk about films that I love. And Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead are definitely two films that I love. Thank you for watching.